In week 15, we discussed color. So I'm just going to go over in After Effects because... You know, I encourage you to use After Effects for motion graphics more than Animate, but like I said, I had to teach Animate. So I'm going to make a circle. I'm going to give it a stroke of none and a fill of, let's do blue. Right. What about, all right, that's good blue. So I'm going to make my circle. Oops, and as we can see, that's not a circle. This is a circle. My anchor point's over here. Remember, before you do any keyframing, always move your anchor point to where you want it. I want it in the center for this demonstration. I'm going to press the S key. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick scale. I'm just putting these 20 frames apart, and I'm doing that by holding Shift and hitting Page Down. Or you could go here and jump from frame to frame. So this first one, right here, I'm going to select it. I'll make the scale 0. So it's going from 0 to, let's make it a little bigger than that. So I'm going to use the arrows to go to the middle keyframe. Let's make it. So I'm going to use, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger based off of that. And then my next keyframe, I'm going to make 0. So this is what's happening. It's scaling up. And that's all that's happening. Now, <clears throat> this is my value graph of what's going on. You know, it's starting at one size, changing size, and then going to another one. I'm going to right-click here. Oh, that's my speed graph. Okay. My value graph looks like that. That's the value of what's going on. And this is the speed at which it's happening. Very boring linear keyframes. So I'm going to select all of them. I can just click here on scale, not the stopwatch. That will remove my animation. Remember that. If I click on scale, all of them are selected. I'm going to right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. I'm going to click here to fit the graph in. Now I'm going to have this speed in towards there and slow out of it just to try something different. Let's move this over to there and this one will have it come out a little bit slower so I just changed the animation a little bit make it a little bit more custom with the speed so you see doing that it makes it hang on it a little bit before it slows out into it shrinking again so that's all we did okay and you're like well what does this have to do with color well I'm going to select this layer press command D to duplicate it, press U to view my keyframes, and I'm going to offset it a little bit. So now I've got this following behind it. And I'm going to change the fill color. Now as we discussed, here's the color grid. It's going from light to dark at the top and bottom. Going sideways, it's getting more saturated, because over here is values of gray, and over here is the pure color, and up and down here you've got the hue how much color is inside it. So this is where we're at right now. And I'm going to be working off of HSB, Hue, Saturation, Brightness. So the brightness is how much light or dark is inside this animate, this shape. So I've darkened it. Now these colors will work together because it's the same value, the same saturation, and it's just a little darker. So now I'm going to duplicate the top layer one more time. Hit U slide it down the anim the timeline. I'm sliding the whole thing. I'm not changing the beginning and end point. And this one I'm going to brighten. So I go to my fill. And I'm going to change how much of a dark value is inside of it by sliding the bright arrow only. So all three of these colors will harmonize because they are from the same more or less uh, Let's move them a little closer together. So I'll move it to the three frames apart. And then from here I'll go one, two, three frames apart. And slide that down. So now it's going to happen a lot faster. Let's see what that looks like. Like such. So those three colors, now you see them all at once. That's going to work because 
they're from the same hue and saturation. I only changed how much white or dark is removed from the color. So now I'm going to select these three. I'm going to duplicate it. With them selected, I'm going to put them on top just to keep them together. Now I'm going to change the hue of these three colors. So I've selected all three of them. I'm going to press P for position. I'm just going to slide them next to the other one. So they're side by side. <coughs> okay. Now the bottom one, I'm going to click Finder. Now for the hue, I'm going to stick with the blue. No, let's not. Let's go green. Hit OK. Then for this one, I'm going to go purple. And then for the top one, I'm going to choose Let's go about like a yellowish orange. All I did was change the hue. So these three colors have the same value, the same amount of light or dark. While, well, the light and dark is changing, but I've changed the saturation. Now these are working fairly well together. That's just two quick ways of getting color palettes when you're choosing how you want to work. Let me put this right here. And then if I zoom out and I move my end, again, this is the section that I am previewing. And I'm changing it just by sliding the blue bar at the end. So now when I hit the OK, you'll see it a little bit more accurately. And that's just a fun way to explore with color palettes when you're working with After Effects. Let's kick it up a notch just because this is the uh, final week of tutorials, unless there's lab questions I'm answering next week. So we've got our colors. Remember, toggle switches and mode down here. These are my switches. These are my modes. Now what happens if I change the blending mode on them? You're going to get much different results doing that. It's just another way that you can play around since they're layered together. And then over here, we can change those. Let's try pin light. Let's do soft light. Let's try linear dodge. See, now I've got a completely different result just by changing how the layers blend together. Fairly interesting. But let's take it one more step further. Let's take these three. I'll press the P key and overlap them. I'm going to press U to hide all my keyframes. So now, this layer right here needs a blend. So let's try overlay. Now, all of them have, the top three have a blend to them. So when they're over top of the other one, you can see through them and they will interact with the colors behind them. Now let's see what we have. See that? is adding some extra interest. See how that changes the animation. So what I did was just find some compatible palettes. And this is just an example of changing the blending and then how they interact when they are together. It's just one way of looking at it differently when you're working with color. You know, I'll, I'll save this and put it up for everyone to uh, look at in the canvas files.